Hi everyone! Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite bands, as you may be able to tell by the shirt. We're talking Funkadelic. Now I've had the pleasure of listening to their discography all week to come up with the cream of the crop. I'm calling this, undeniably, the top 10 best Funkadelic songs. And for a little bit of fun, at the end I'll have one overrated song. But in the meantime, let's get to the top 10. At number 10, we have I Wanna Know If It's Good To You from Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. Now, Funkadelic was born after George Clinton lost the name to the Parliaments, his doo-wop soul group, and decided to take the incredibly talented backing band and sign them as a totally separate act. Those early Funkadelic records are steeped in Motown soul with the slick back, smooth harmonies, but with a fascination for the freaky, psychedelic rock of Jimi Hendrix. In I Wanna Know If It's Good To You, both the new school and the old school exist harmoniously in stoned out glory. Fuzzy Haskins and Ray Davies of the Parliaments, along with the younger bloods of Eddie Hazel and Billy Nelson, all trade off vocals of the soulful title mantra, while Nelson and Hazel go absolutely off on bass guitar with these reverb soaked freakouts. Meanwhile, New keyboard edition Bernie Worrell plays some seriously twisted Hammond organ, with the Leslie cabinet moving it all around the stereo spectrum. It's soulful, catchy, and trippy as hell. They trimmed it down for a radio edit, but that really cuts into what makes the song gel. They really need that extra room to stretch the groove, and once they do, it sure feels good to me. At number 9, we have Can You Get To That? from Maggot Brain. Now after releasing two albums in 1970 only separated by a few months, they got an entire year to work on their next album to be released in 1971, the dark acid rock that was Maggot Brain. You could hear that given some proper time, the funkadelic sound had really blossomed into its own thing. The core group was locked in, with Billy Nelson on bass, Tal Ross and Eddie Hazel on guitar, Tiki Fullwood on drums, and of course the Wizard of Woo himself, Bernie Worrell on keyboards. It's such a heavy album, paradoxically tight and loose. With money and personnel issues, it would be the last time the full original band played together, but damn if they didn't put all of their soul and sweat into this one. Can You Get To That is a classic doo-wop song with Ray Davis's deep bass vocals along with the female vocals of Hot Buttered Soul trading off on the hook. The guitar has old Robert Johnson blues vibes with deep in-the-pocket drums. The gospel vocals borrow from the staple singers and the old Stax vibe with some great heavy lyrics. I once had a life, or oh rather, life had me. It's like a choir for the street corner a far-out funk soul hymn, and a song that is uniquely funkadelic. At number 8, we have Funky Dollar Bill from Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. Now, almost any funkadelic album could be described as far out, but for total gonzo, nothing reaches the heights that was Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. According to George Clinton, the short six-song album was recorded in one day, with the entire band tripping on LSD, and boy, does it sound like it. Just listening to the album, you might think that someone slipped you something. The lyrics seem totally off the cuff, stream of consciousness, with Towel Ross and Eddie Hazel dueling with jagged, fuzzed out guitars. Meanwhile, Bernie's chaotic piano chords appear and disappear randomly, panning back and forth in the stereo landscape. Even with the lyrics that don't seem too coherent, Towel takes the lead and sounds positively possessed. It's so passionate, even mythical. Never has the term acid rock seemed so appropriate. With a head full of hallucinogens, Funkadelic made a psychedelic hard rock touchstone. It's exhilarating. They're in their prime experimenting with sounds and their minds, and allowing us to free our minds and our asses. At number 7, we have I'll Bet You from Funkadelic. Now, time has been very kind to that original debut album from Funkadelic, but back in 1970, 
They fit in like a zebra in a horse stable. Yes, they were heavily influenced by R&B contemporaries like The Temptations, Sly Stone, and Jimi Hendrix. But this was some dirty, down-home soul music that at times was completely bonkers. Its distorted guitars pushed well past the red, almost swallowing the incredible, tuneful harmonies. I'll Bet You was a song so indebted to the classic 60s R&B sound that it would later be watered down and covered by the Jackson 5, who would add unnecessary strings to the production. But with all due respect, children and teens should not be singing this song. The original parliaments, Ray Davis, George Clinton, Fuzzy Haskins, Calvin Simon, and Grady Thomas take turns rapping over Tiki's locked-in hi-hat, decades before DJs and hip-hop artists would do the same. The structure and melody of the song was rooted in Motown, but the sound of it was Motor City Mayhem. What is soul? Man, I don't know. But this song had it in spades. At six, we have Cholly Funk getting ready to roll from One Nation Under a Groove. Now the difference of personnel between the last pick, the first Funkadelic album, and One Nation Under a Groove is so drastic, it's kinda crazy that you would even call them the same band. It's like being a fan of a sports team and not watching for four years and then being surprised when you tune in and don't know anyone anymore. Guitarist Tal Ross and Eddie Hazel were gone and replaced by Gary Scheider and Michael Hampton bewitching the six strings. Tiki Fullwood was now replaced behind the kit by Jerome Braley, and Billy Bass Nelson was also replaced by Bootzilla himself. Outside of George Clinton, Ray Davis was the only one still kicking from the original doo-wop parliament. But don't get it twisted, Dr. Funkenstein still had an ear for talent. That band was still smoking just very different from the funky psych rock of their early days. Charlie is an incredibly catchy track, led by Bootsy's busy bumpin' bass lines, with Gary Scheider jivin' about his pre- and post-funkified life, and a classic catchy P-funk chorus that's probably sung by seven or eight talented singers. It sounds as though our narrator is getting abducted by extraterrestrial Afronauts, and if that happened, who wouldn't be ready to roll? As they say, you got to go with the funk. At number five, we have One Nation Under a Groove from the album of the same name. I wouldn't be surprised if many P-Funk soldiers rate One Nation much higher than I do. To me, if I'm in a funkadelic mood, I'll probably reach for those hard rocking earlier albums. I'm a rocker at heart. And if I want to get down with my funky self, I'll probably queue up Parliament. By One Nation Under a Groove, the line separating Parliament and Funkadelic was basically non-existent. Outside of not having a horn section on the album, it was indistinguishable. One Nation even takes that deep clap from Flashlight to drive it home. It's a monster jam no matter what name is on it. Junie Morrison, formerly of the Ohio Players, joined the group for the album, and Funkadelic was never the same. It was more commercial and danceable. This wasn't music meant for the rock clubs anymore, it was meant for the dance floor. Not only did they have the double guitar attack, but now they had the two-headed keyboard hydra of Junie and Bernie Worrell. The wealth of talent in the band was staggering. One Nation Under a Groove pushed Funkadelic out of their constrictions with the promise to funk, the whole funk, and nothing but the funk. At number four we have I Got A Thing, you got a thing, everybody got a thing, from Funkadelic. Now I'd like to know what was going on in the producers' heads of the show Upbeat when Funkadelic showed up dressed as cowboys, wizards, Native Americans, and whatever the hell Fuzzy Haskins was supposed to be to play this fuzzed out, ripping anthem. Some rich white guys were probably flipping their lids somewhere. This was a revolution that was televised and in syndication. If you were to put together a list of the most straight-up badass songs of all time, this would be up there. That overdriven guitar riff with the wah-wah pedal sounds like a buzzsaw, with the rhythm guitar chiming back and forth, while the group chants the title mantra in unison. Eddie Hazel's bridge vocals, You don't drink what I drink, you don't smoke what I smoke, 
You don't think like I think. You don't joke like I joke. Are positively hair raising. It's as if his soul had jumped out of his body just to testify. It's a message of tolerance in a hard rocking, psychedelic spiritual. And a reminder that when we get together doing our thing, we all help each other. At number three, we have Cosmic Slop from the album of the same name. It's a song so good they released it on two separate albums, of course on the album of the same name, and a Hot Fire Live version on Hardcore Jollies. This remains a staple of the P-Funk live show to this day. It's funk metal at its finest. The band Living Color was practically born in this song. Gary Scheider shines on both main vocals and guitar, with a little assistance on lead guitar from the only white guy in the blackest band of all time, Ron Bykowski. The solo is pure fire, as good as anything from Van Halen or any other hair metal icon who tries to hold a candle to it. Recently added drummer Tyrone Lampkins starts off with that heavy, tribal tom beat before kicking into that driving steady beat. The lyrics about the narrator discovering that his mother is a sex worker hit hard. The anguish in Scheider's vocals conveying this hard-fought struggle of a family living in poverty. The devil taunts him in the wacky but catchy chorus. Would you like to dance with me? We're doing the cosmic slot. It's as if Satan is beckoning, but he could still hear his mother call even after catching hell, and he prays for her sins to be forgiven. It's an epic song that meshes together soul, gospel, funk, and metal in a way only Funkadelic could. Slop has never sounded so good. At number two, we have Not Just Knee Deep from Uncle Jam Wants You. Let's be clear, Not Just Knee Deep is one of the founding pillars of rap and hip hop. De La Soul had a huge hit with Me, Myself, and I, among the many artists who dared to touch the crown. The entire West Coast G-Funk sound of Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Ice Cube is wholly based on Uncle Jam and the Moog and synthesizers of Junie Morrison and Bernie Worrell. The influence of this record is monumental. It cannot be understated. It's gangster. Possibly the craziest thing about the song is it jams on that groove for 15 minutes straight and never wears out its welcome. You never want the party to end. This being P-Funk in their prime, it's a who's who of the funkiest minds of all time. And it's packed to the brim with hooks. It moves confidently from part to part, the chorus giving way to some righteous keyboard workouts, which gives way to Kid Funkadelic Michael Hampton summoning demons on his guitar. Don't forget Bootsy too, baby. This musicianship is unreal, but this is an electric era Miles. This is a party, son. It's hard to find anything as joyous as this is. Something about the music, it always makes me dance. Dance music, hell, all music would never be the same. At number one, we have Standing on the Verge of Getting It On from the album of the same name. Eddie Hazel isn't just one of the most underrated guitarists of all time, though he certainly is that. He's one of the best guitarists of all time, straight up. To me, it's a three-way tie between him, Jimi Hendrix, and Prince. But don't make me choose, they're all total badasses. Not only technically great, but able to tap into something so uniquely personal that makes their play so special. Standing on the Verge of Getting It On is the last full album to feature him, and the title track is only credited to him and George Clinton. It's the funkiest hard rock song of all time, with Hazel spinning that impossibly epic riff at the speed of sound. The verse vocals follow along, inviting us to free our funky minds and not be so quick to pass judgment. Even if you don't dig it, don't mean it's not a thing or thing to do, could be just for you. When we finally succumb to the call, we're disoriented, but greeted by the catchy callback hook. People, what you doing? Standing on the verge of getting on, really getting it on. It's an all-time crowd pleaser at a P-Funk show. It's heavy, it's dancey, it's made to sing along to. It's a P-Funk classic. The P-Funk era was dominated by George Clinton, 
Bootsy Collins and Bernie Worrell, but this right here was the Eddie Hazel Show. And him and Funkadelic weren't just standing on the verge, they were slaying on one of the best rock songs of all time. And now I'll share two more cuts that didn't quite make the list. The first is Maggot Brain. It's hardly a song. The backing band plays those solemn chords under that slow, steady beat, while Eddie Hazel goes to town on the best guitar solo of all time. It's positively searing. As the famous story goes, George Clinton told Eddie Hazel, then only 20 years old, to play as if his mother just died and how that would make him feel. He proceeded to wail on a legendary 10-minute solo. It's a staggering piece of music for that solo alone. And my other just missed it pick is Good to Your Earhole from Let's Take It to the Stage. Now there are a lot of great underrated cuts on those mid-period Funkadelic albums, and this starts off that album with a funk rock blast. With the steady, groovy bass of Cordell Boogie Mawson and the Cerberus guitar attack of Scheider, Hazel and Hampton, it's definitely good for your ear hole and one of their best. And finally, we come to my pick for the most overrated Funkadelic song. And for that, it's the electric spanking of War Babies, both the title track and the album. The album still has a four and a half stars on all music. It's very critically acclaimed. And believe me, I've tried to warm up to it. But nope, I just don't get it. It's not some kind of underrated classic. It's about as good as Parliament's trombipulation. And friends, that's not a good thing. It's the sound of our heroes running out of steam, perhaps swallowed up by the extracurricular nonsense happening outside the group. The title track badly wants to be One Nation Under a Groove 2.0, but falls flat. Not only is the hook limp, but the song is boring which is crazy for a collective known to stuff multiple million dollar ideas into the same song. Elsewhere, Electric Cuties is a solid B-tier song, and Funk Gets Stronger is more a curiosity for managing to rope the elusive Sly Stone out of hiding. But it ain't that great. I'll admit to a bias against certain 80s productions, but it's not only that, because Computer Games and Atomic Dog are awesome. Electric spanking is so bereft of ideas and energy that it's crazy to think that it was planned as a double album. It's baffling. How could the album be better when it's twice as long? The story of how the album art was censored is definitely interesting, but five stars? No, sir. To me, this album is sadly forgettable. Considering you're still watching, I also wanted to feature a deep cut as well, and for that I choose Fish, Chips, and Sweat. Now for this list, I listened to Gary Scheider's band before Funkadelic for the first time, United Soul. They created an album called U.S. Soul with Funkadelic, which was produced by the band and George Clinton. It's only five songs long, but man, are those some cool, weird jams. They're very piano-driven. Several of those songs would resurface later on Funkadelic albums and side projects, too. Still, despite the With Funkadelic name, it isn't truly a Funkadelic deep cut with a capital F. Fish, Chips, and Sweat was recorded on the same fateful, day-long acid trip session that yielded Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. It really deserved to be included. It fits right in with the screw-loose psych rock of Funky Dollar Bill and Friday Night August the 15th. It has ripping guitars, heavy organ rhythm, and a great melody. I know they were high when they made it, but they also must have been high to not include it on the album. It's truly an unreleased gem. So there you have it. That was undeniably the top 10 best Funkadelic songs. So how wrong was I? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you somehow think Electric Spanking deserves those stars? Let me know. And if there's any artist you'd like to see me rank, let me know in the comments below. Hope you stick around. Thank you for watching. And the female vocals of Hot Butter... <laughs> Second part. Uh...
<laughs> Junie Morrison, formerly of the O. Oh, uh, Junie Morrison, formerly of the O. Oh, uh, Dr. Funkenstein still have. Ha oh, no. Okay. Not that one. <laughs> okay. It'll be a lot of shots of that. Mm. <laughs> Gotta cut that out. <laughs> and hip art. Uh, ah! <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. Jeez. At number two, we have. Oh, oh no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of take just like start. Wait, what? <laughs> Do you somehow think electric fit? <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs>